is switching to Linux from Windows the right move for you? So before you make any decisions, I'm gonna show you what you get when you set up your Linux system for the first time and what you need to do to get up and running as quickly as possible. And I will also tell you who absolutely should not be switching over to Linux. So let's start with the hardware. And this is not really a thing in Linux as it runs on virtually any hardware. If you're running Windows now, odds are pretty darn good that Linux will work for you. So no need to spend money on new hardware. And of course, the software is free as well. Now you have to select the Linux distribution. You want something that is a nice graphical interface where you can use your mouse and not have to learn a bunch of commands. You want something that closely resembles Windows so you can start working with the least amount of frustrations. But if you search which is the best Linux distro for beginners, man, you're gonna be bombarded by millions of opinions of which is the best. And honestly, it doesn't really matter when you're just dipping your toes in to see what this is all about. I mean, I like Pop OS, which is very easy to use and has a very window-ish feel to it. I also like Mint for the exact same reason. The one I'm gonna go with is Zorin OS. But with all of these, you can try them without removing Windows so you can decide which one you like. They all have great tutorials on how to install them. Just simply follow them along. But essentially the process is the same. Once you boot into your chosen Linux system, you will have the options to try it or to install it. If you click on try it, you can click around and see what it's got to offer and see which one is more intuitive for you. When you try it, it doesn't actually touch your windows or your data. So try them all, pick your favorite, and then go ahead and install it. And what's great is that there are loads of tutorials on YouTube on how to install your chosen Linux distro. And you can choose if you want a dual boot system. So you still have the option to have windows on the one drive and then Linux on the other drive. So let's dive into Zorin OS. So this is what the environment looks like. Pretty much familiar, right? There's a start button on the left hand side with all your menu options. Next to it, there's something called workspaces, which allows you to work in different environments. Then you got the Firefox, which is your web browser. Then you got your files, which is, well, basically where you're gonna keep all your files, very much like file manager that we have on Windows. All right, and let's close that down. Next up, we've got your software, which is essentially your store for all your software, like the App Store on our mobile phones, like the Microsoft Store on Windows. And of course, you can find all the utilities and all the apps and all the software that you possibly could need right here. Some is already pre-installed and you can uninstall them if you don't like them. And there's an option for very quick updates to see which of the apps actually need an update. And a simple click just does it for you. Continuing our little tour on the right hand side at the bottom, here you see the type of connection that you have, Bluetooth, your NAT light, you can enable or disable them with a simple click of a button. You can even have an option to capture things on your screen and it can either be a static image or a little video clip. Next to it is the setting signs, which we'll get into it. Here is the lock icon, which basically means you can lock your computer and then you can sign back in when you're ready. All right, let's put our password in and let's carry on. And then on the very last option, you got the option to power your system down. And let's just go back to the start button. And here you can see things are already grouped together under certain categories. This happens to be your accessory categories. If you go back, you can go through each one of them and see what's actually pre-installed and ready for you to go. On the right hand side of that little menu, here is where you see little personalization options and you can click onto them. And again, everything is like Windows. Everything you can click, you can change. Now let's right click on the start button and then let's go into settings. So if this sounds familiar, well, it should because Windows does the same thing. And here is where you'll find everything that you need in order to set up your machine and go through the settings. Things like Bluetooth, you can add more devices, changing the background. You can just go down this list and customize your machine as you want it to be. So far, so easy. Now let's install something and see how that goes. Okay, so I fire up Firefox and I like Chrome. So I'm gonna to go to the Chrome website and I'm gonna click on the download Chrome and let's see what it does. Oh look, it recognized Chrome for Linux and that's exactly what we want. So we click on accept and install and go through the normal motions. Once it's on our computer, we can simply open it up 
And then it opens up this little screen saying, choose an application to open the .deb file. And now we have a bunch of options, software install, archive manager, or install Linux application. I'm just gonna choose install Linux application. The screen pops up and I simply click on install. Now with Linux security, you will have to put in your super user password when you do things that changes the system, like installing a new application. That's good security. It's like the administrator password on Windows. And there we go. There is your Chrome installed. And now what we're gonna do is I wanna pin this to my taskbar. So I'm gonna unpin Firefox because I don't need to use that. I'm then gonna go to the internet section. There's my Google Chrome, right click on that. And then I select the option to pin to dash. Ah, so now I learned that dash is the equivalent of your Windows taskbar. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. So next up, what about email? Now I use Microsoft Outlook. I don't use Gmail as my primary email. So let's see what Zorin has to offer. Now it does come pre-installed with Evolution, which is like the Outlook equivalent. Okay, so let's click on the Zorin icon and let's type there Evolution. So it does the good old search thing. There is Evolution right there. Now it's the first time that I'm installing it and using it, so I need to give it the information that it needs, like my name, the service that it's connecting to, the organization name, you know, all the things that your normal Outlook client would need or any email client that you set up on your phone, Okay, and basically it's a regular email application, your inbox, your outbox, your send items. And of course, to send a new mail, you press the new mail button and you can address it. You can attach a file and automatically opens up into your home folder, which is where your files are all kept. All pretty standard stuff. And as we did before, type evolution. There it is, it's a whole bunch of shortcuts, but the one we want is pin to dash. And there we go, our system is ready to rock and roll. Okay, now we're getting emails. Now what about Word and PowerPoint and Excel and PDFs and JPEG files? Well, obviously we're gonna need to use our data when we move it across from Windows to Linux. So let's check those out next. Right, I got a bunch of files on a USB stick. As soon as I connect to it, there it is. It recognizes that it's there. Now I can go to my file manager at the bottom, click on that. Now I go click on the USB flash drive and here are all the files that I've just copied across from my Windows machine. I select them all, right click and copy. Then I go to my home folder, go to my documents and I simply paste them in there. Copy and paste works perfectly well here as well. So do these files actually open? Well, let's go try each one. So let's try with the Word document. Oh, LibreOffice opens and because that's already pre-installed on Zorin OS. And this looks awfully familiar again. I keep referring back to it, the fact that it's so similar to what we're used to, we shouldn't really be afraid of this. Look how close it is. Oh, I misspelled something. I need to add something to the dictionary. Right click, add to dictionary, right click, spell check, everything that we're used to, and it just works and opens well. All right, let's try the next one. This one is a PDF. So let's maximize it. So we take the entire screen. That's a property valuation on some property. PDF files works just well. Hasn't lost the formatting. It's all there exactly how you expect. Close that down. What about an Excel document? Yep, LibreOffice opens it and there it is. Looks exactly the same as Excel. Did I mention that LibreOffice comes pre-installed and you don't have to pay for it either? I mean, there's no ads as far as I can see. It's just there, so why not use it? Okay, let's close down Excel. Next up, we've got two JPEG files. Can you cycle between them as you normally would? Yep, that works perfectly fine as well. And what else have we got? Now we've got a PowerPoint. Does that work perfectly fine? Or, yep, there it is. It even looks exactly the same. Things are where they're supposed to be. So you gotta admit, it's pretty awesome. So Linux isn't so scary after all. I mean, when you're getting started, you don't have to jump into terminal and learn all these new commands. You can easily get up and running pretty much from the moment you install it. And everything is very Windows-like. You can go through the menus and enable and disable stuff so your computer works just the way you want it to. But before you decide, uh, here are some warnings. 
If you have loads of complicated Office apps with complicated macros, you're really going to struggle. If you have any company apps or things that only work on Windows, like you have hardware peripherals that plug into your computer, those may not work as those drivers may not have Linux compatibility. You could try using something like Wine or Bottles, which are systems that kind of try have Windows apps to work on Linux. Let me know if you want to see a video about that. Now, gamers, you're going to struggle too. Now, Linux has come a long way for gamers, but it's still not perfect. I am personally not a gamer, so for me, it's not an issue, but I thought I would mention that in case you are. Oh, and contrary to popular belief and those wonderful YouTube comments, Linux is not problem free. It's not like you will set up your Linux system and never have any issues. Just like any operating system, issues do pump up. So plan on investing some time learning. It isn't Windows, it's a brand new operating system. The terminal commands, you're gonna have to get into them at some point, but Linux is absolutely usable to get you working very quickly, right from the beginning with very little learning. So if you don't wanna keep running Windows or have hardware that simply cannot take Windows 11 or Windows 12, or are just tired of Microsoft doing whatever they want to with their updates and their ads and AI and all that privacy stuff in Windows, then perhaps it's time to give Linux a real shot. Now remember, you are gonna to need to back up your data on your Windows computer so that you have the ability to use it on your Linux computer. So I've got a video right here on how to back stuff up. Give the video a quick like before you head out and I will see you in this video. Let's go.